Hello and welcome back. In previous videos, we saw that one concern of macroeconomics is low unemployment rate. So here, what we will see is how to measure unemployment. Now, in order to measure unemployment, we have to define when to consider a person as employed and when we consider it as unemployed. So according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, an employed person is any person 16 years old or older who works for pay either for someone else or in his or her own business for one or more hours per week. Someone who works without pay for 15 or more hours per week in a family enterprise or who has a job but has been temporarily absent with or without pay. So here, if we consider someone in his sick leave, he will be considered as employed. Now, on the other hand, unemployed, it's a person 16 years old or older who's not working. So this is the first condition. He's available for work and has made specific efforts to find work during the previous four weeks. So here, the person, he has to be actively seeking a job. And this is where he will be considered as unemployed. So someone that he doesn't want or she doesn't want to work, he won't be considered as unemployed. Now, when measuring unemployment, we have to define labor force. And labor force, it's the sum of employed and unemployed. Also, we have the population. The population, part of it, it's the labor force, and the other part, it's not in the labor force. Not in the labor force, it's a person who's not looking for work because he or she does not want a job or has given up looking. Here we arrive to the unemployment rate, and it's the ratio of the number of people unemployed to the total number of people in the labor force. So here, as you can see, it's unemployed divided by employed plus unemployed, which is the labor force. Now, the labor force participation rate is the ratio of the labor force to the total population 16 years old or older. So it's labor force divided by the population. One important measure that economists consider beside the unemployment rate is the duration of unemployment. And it represents the length of time that persons classified as unemployed had been continuously looking for work. We're having one phenomena that happens and it's called the discouraged worker effect. And it's the decline in the measured unemployment rate that results when people who want to work but cannot find jobs grow discouraged and stop looking, thus dropping out of the ranks of the unemployed and the labor force. As you can see here, we're having like something positive. It's the drop or the decline in the unemployment rate. However, this drop here, it's caused by people that they are discouraged and they stop looking for a job and it's not good at all. So not every decrease in unemployment rate, it's good for the economy because we might have the discouraged worker effect. In a future video, I'll explain why when we're having discouraged people and people that they stopped looking for a job, it will lead us to a decline in the unemployment rate. Some unemployment is inevitable. When we consider the various costs of unemployment, it's useful to categorize unemployment into three types. First type we're having is the frictional unemployment, and it's the portion of unemployment 
that it's due to normal turnover in the labor market. It's used to denote short-run job skill matching problems. Now the term frictional is used to describe the fact that labor markets don't immediately match job demand with job supply. You may think about a fresh graduate having several offers, but still didn't decide which offer to choose. Now the structural unemployment, it's the second type that we're having. And it's the portion of unemployment that is due to changes in the structure of the economy that result in a significant loss of jobs in certain industries. Although structural unemployment is expected in a dynamic economy, it's painful to the workers who experience it. Structural unemployment refers to a mismatch between the jobs available and the skill levels of the unemployed. So here, if we, considering, uh, if we consider robots that they are replacing the job of some workers, in the other place, it's a creation of jobs because we need engineers to create these robots. Now, the third type of unemployment, it's cyclical unemployment. It's an unemployment that is above frictional and structural unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is the main cause of high unemployment rates. It's caused by a downturn in the business cycle. It's part of the natural rise and fall of economic growth that occurs over time. So when consumer demand of goods and services drops, it leads to a reduction in production, thus lower need for workers, which causes layoffs. The natural rate of unemployment is the unemployment rate that occurs as a normal part of the functioning of the economy, sometimes taken as the sum of frictional and structural unemployment rate. The costs of unemployment are neither evenly distributed across the population nor easily quantified. Many people lose their savings and this leads to less consumption when they are unemployed. Also, unemployment can have a devastating impact on people's lives. It affects not just the unemployed person, but also family members and the wider community. So the loss of income by the parents can damage the prospects of the next generation. Unemployment also results in an increased cost of health uh, to health services. Studies have shown that unemployed people experiences low self-esteem and low self-identity causing physical and mental health problems and can extend to broader consequences of social isolation and the loss of social networks and support. Job seekers' morale and confidence decline with each month that passes in unemployment. Finally, unemployment can create tension in society, leading to self-abuse violence and crime. So as you can see, and this is why unemployment is a concern for macroeconomics, not only for the economic consequences that we're having, but also for the social uh, costs and consequences that we're having. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.